Welcome to Ezekiel Academy YouTube channel. If you are coming across my lecture for the first time, please like the video, share it with others, and subscribe so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you for being part of this channel. In this lecture, I want to examine if SAS 1 presentation of financial statements in line with accrual basis if SAS. So, what are the components of financial statements? Components of financial statements. Components of financial statements include number one, we have statement, statement of financial performance. Two, statement of Financial position. Three. Statement of cash flows. Statement of cash flows. Four. Statement of changes. In net assets or equity, at this statement of changes in equity, number five, we have statement of accounting policies and those to the financial statements, statement of accounting policies. And notes to financial statements. Number six, we have statement of comparison of budget and actual amount. Statement of comparison. Of budget and actual amount. Statement of comparison of budget and actual amount. We will be examining the financial statements one after the other. Number one is statement of financial performance. Statement of financial performance. A statement of financial performance is the statement prepared to ascertain the surplus or deficit for the period. A statement prepared to ascertain the surplus deficit for the period. So we have surplus when revenue, when it is greater than expenditure. It's a surplus if revenue is greater than the expenditure. Why it is a deficit if expenditure is greater than the revenue? So I want to know, I want to note that for the purpose of preparing statement of financial performance, your expenditure. The expenditure to expenditure to consider must be revenue in nature. Revenue expenditure. You don't consider capital expenditure. Capital expenditure will be capitalized. That is, capital expenditure will be recorded as non-current assets. So the expenditure you need is revenue expenditure. That is what we are going to use in the statement of financial performance. Let us assume you have Ministry of Work. Let me give you the layout. Layout of statement of financial performance. They have Ministry of Dash. Could be any ministry. Statement of financial performance. 
before the year ended. December, if the year ends is December, December 31st, 20XX. So you start with revenue. Start with the revenues. What are the revenues of government? Revenue may include items such as taxes, taxes, fees, or fines, or penalties, penalties, and uh, licenses. They are all forms of revenue of government. The revenue from Exchange transactions, revenue from exchange transactions. So, they are all forms of revenue. Then we have statutory allocation. Statutory allocation. Share of federation account revenue. Then we also may have that. Value added tax, VAT allocation, VAT allocation is also a form of revenue. Revenue from mining. So, mining, so if it is federal government. Then we also have earnings and sales. So it's also a form of revenue. Government grants. Government grants. It's also a form of revenue. Then we also have a grant from donor agency. Grant from donor agencies. So it's a form of revenue. Then we also have profit from disposal of non current assets. Profit from the disposal of non current asset. You will need to calculate this where an asset are sold at a profit. Profit from disposal. Where the sales proceeds from disposal of non current asset is greater than the carrying amount. Let me give you the format for calculating that. Working one. Profit or loss from disposal of non current assets. So you may have profit and you may have loss. So we have sales proceeds, the amount at which the asset is realized, the amount at which the asset is sold. From this, you less carrying amount. Carrying Amount. Another word for carrying amount is net book value. So the carrying amount will be the cost of the asset. Cost of the asset disposed less accumulated depreciation on disposal or on the asset disposed. So if you subtract this, you arrive at the carrying amount. When you subtract the carrying amount, you arrive at profit. And if it is negative, that means you have loss from disposal. So we have profit or loss from disposal of no current assets. So that is how you are going to calculate it. If it's positive, you have profit. And if it is negative, that is loss. Then, as that is. If you have another, you may have another forms of revenue. Let me have interest. Interest income. Interest income. Then another forms of revenue, other revenue. Other revenue. So if you aggregate this, you have total revenue. Total revenue. That is total revenue. After revenue, 
The next item to consider is expenditure. Expenditure. The expenditure to consider here must be revenue in Asia. Or oh, they must be recurrent expenditure, not a capital expenditure. Expenditure in cure on the day-to-day -day activities of the government. That is recurrent. So not capital expenditure. Capital expenditure are in cure on an asset, in acquisition of an asset. So example of recurrent expenditure are expenditure on general public service, expenditure. on general public service. Expenditure on general public service. Personnel cost. Personnel cost. Personnel cost. Then you may have overhead cost. Overhead. Overhead cost. Then we have expenditure such as CRF charges, CRF charges, consolidated revenue fund charges. Charges is an expenditure, not an income. Finance cost, finance cost is also a form of expenses. Then loss from disposal, loss from disposal. Of no current assets, same as working one, the working one, the working displayed here earlier. So I've told you it is a loss where the carrying amount, that is the noble value, is greater than the actual sales proceeds. Then depreciation and amortization. Depreciation and amortization. Depreciation and amortization, if any, impairment loss, if any, impairment loss, then other revenues, various other ones, other, sorry, other expenditures, various other revenue expenditure or recurrent expenditure. So by the time you, start, you sum up all the expenditure you have been, you now subtract your expenditure from the total revenue you may have surplus or deficit if it is negative. Surplus or deficit for the period. Then you now have the opening balance. Let me just say consolidated Little revenue funds brought forward. So if you add that, you get the amount that will be carried forward. Or you can have accumulated surplus or deficit brought forward. Then you have surplus or deficit carried forward. This is the format for statement of financial performance. Number two, we have Statement of financial position. A statement of financial position is the statement of assets, liabilities, and equity of an entity as at a particular date. A statement of assets, liabilities, and equity of an entity as at a particular date. So, when you are preparing your statement of financial position, you may choose to arrange your assets in order of their liquidity. That is, you may choose to start with the most liquid asset. Or 
On the other way round, you may choose to use the order of their permanency by starting with the most permanent asset first. The order of permanency, that is, you start with the property, plant, and equipment. It's more permanent than any other assets. After property, plant, and equipment, you may have investments, you may have intangible assets, and so on. But when you start with, when you are using other of liquidity, the cash or cash equivalent is more liquid than any other one. You may start with cash or cash equivalent, you have receivables, you have inventories, and others. Now, the layout of statement of financial position. You may have ministry of that statement of financial position as at if the year end is December. You have December 31st, 20XX. So, I want to use the order of liquidity. So, you start with assets. So, the most liquid asset, we have cash, and cash equivalent. Cash and cash equivalent, which comprises the cash in hands, cash at bank. So after this, you may have receivables. It's not necessary you classify your assets into current and non-current if you are using this order of presentation. But if you want to classify them as non-current asset, if you want to use order of their permanency, you may start with non-current asset before you have your current asset. Receivables, then we have inventories. Inventories, inventories, inventories. Then you may also have prepayments. Prepayments. Prepayments, you may have investments. Investments, investments. Then you may also have uh, other financial assets, other financial assets. And you may also have intangible assets, intangible assets. Then you may also have the property, plant, and equipment. Let me have this as working number two. Property, plant, and equipment. Your property, plant, and equipment include the land and building, your plant and machineries, the motor vehicles, your furniture and fittings, etc. So when you sum up all these, you have the total assets. Total Total assets. Total assets. I will give you the format for this later. After total assets, then you have liabilities. Liabilities. The first liability to examine on this basis is current liabilities. Current liabilities. Your current liabilities include your payables, your account payables, your payables. Then you may also have short term borrowings. Short term borrowings. Short term borrowings. You may have current portion, current portion of borrowings where the standard pertaining to that requires that. If you classify that into current and non current, example include lease, where you have lease obligations. You are going to segregate the lease obligation into current portion and the non current. The current portion will be regarded as recognized as current liabilities, while the non current portion will be regarded as non current liabilities. Then you may also have provisions. 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 
provision is, is a liability. You may have employees benefit, employees benefit, the short term employees benefits or uh, obligations the accrued. So when some of these you have this as your current liabilities. After that, you have no current liabilities. No current. No current liabilities. No current liabilities. You may have employees benefits. Employees benefits. The long term employees benefits. Then you might have bank loans. Bank loans. Then you might have other ones. There are various other liabilities. Other non current liabilities. You add this, you have the total of our non current liabilities. Then you add it to current. Then you have total liabilities. Total liabilities. After the liabilities, the next item is net assets or equity. Net assets or equity. Net assets or equity. This includes capital contributed by other government entity. Capital contributed by other government entity. Capital contributed by other government entity. So then you have you may also have reserves. Your reserves, which may also include the your final balance in your statement of financial performance. Or you might have that written as part of accumulated accumulated surplus or deficit. So the sum of all this gives us this. We now add this to liability. To, in order to arrive at the total net asset or equity. Total net assets or equity and liabilities. This is the format for preparing the statement of financial position. I want to consider the notes too, where I have property, plant, and equipment, note two. Now, let me give you the format for that. Working number two, movement, movement in property, plant, and equipment. Or you can call it schedule of property, plant, and equipment. Now, if you have total, we have furniture and fittings. We have uh, motor vehicles. We may have land, plant and machinery, or plant and equipment. We may also have land and building. So. You start with the opening balance. Balance brought forward. That is at cost. The opening balance in respect to each class of assets. Then you have addition. If any, if you have addition to motor vehicles and furniture, then you may have revaluation surplus. Where any of the assets is revalued upwards, 
For instance, if land is revalued upwards, you have that here. Then you may have revaluation deficit. Negative. Then any of these assets may be reclassified to have reclassification. Maybe plant an asset that was recorded as plant and equipment is now to be reclassified to motor vehicle. Maybe the asset is aging, it's no longer strong, and it cannot be used as plant and equipment as a heavy, a heavy duty asset. So you now classify them as motor vehicle to carry some petty loads. So we will have reclassification. Then disposal. Disposer, where an asset is sold. Let's assume motor vehicle is sold. So you have disposer. Then you have the balance. You have the balance. So this will be the balance as at the end of the period. Let me call this balance A. Then after this balance, you have depreciation. Depreciation, you start with the balance brought forward. That is accumulated depreciation for prior accounting period. Then depreciation charge for the year as an expense. This is the amount of depreciation that will appear in the statement of financial performance in respect to or of each asset. Then you may have reclassification. The asset that was reclassified before is plant and equipment and was reclassified as motor vehicle. Then you may also have the disposal. Disposer. The asset that was disposed is motor vehicle. Then you have the closing balance in respect to the depreciation balance as at December 31st, 20XX. Let me have that as B. So carrying amount. Carrying amount as a January 1st and the one as a December 31st. The one as a December will be A minus B. But the one as a January 1st will be the balance brought forward in respect to the cost here, the opening balance in cost minus the opening balance for depreciation here. So that will give you the balance as at the beginning of the period. While the balance as at the end of the period, that will be A minus B. This is the schedule of property, plan, and equipment. That is, movement in property, plant, and equipment. Now, let's take a question as work example from ICAN May 2023, Public Sector Accounting and Finance, question number one. Example, the following information relates to the accounts of Dover State Government for the year ended December 31st, 2022. You have the debit side and the credit side, amount in million naira. The first item is land and building, cost 387,500. This will be treated as more current asset. Long term investments, 187,500, more current asset. Equipment and furniture. 67,500 non current asset. These are accumulated depreciation. We have on ladder building 40,000, motor vehicles 30,000, and equipment and furniture 21,250. This depreciation will be charged against the non current asset for statement of financial position purpose. But note, these are not the depreciation that will be charged as an expenses in the statement of profit or loss. The amount of depreciation that will be expensed is the depreciation charge for the year. D 
the accumulated depreciation you have in the Trabala represents the accumulated depreciation for the prior accounting period. Then we have motor vehicle cost, 145,000. This is also a non current asset. Federation of Cash Allocation, 287,500. This is revenue. VAT Allocation, 87,500. Revenue. Grants from federal government, 33,750. That is revenue. Internally generated funds, 97,500. That is revenue. Grants from donor agency, 25,000. That is revenue. Personnel emolument, 125,000. This is an expenditure. Maintenance of premises, 5,000. That is expenditure. Consolidated revenue fund charges. Because of the word charges, this is also an expenditure, 32,500. Overhead expenses, 25,000. This is an expenditure. Miscellaneous expenditure slash income. This is an expenditure. Why this will be treated as revenue. No notes. This is not current liability, 250,000. Current assets slash liability. This is current assets. Why this is current liabilities. Consolidated Revenue Funds. Consolidated Revenue Fund. This is the CRF balance. This is the balance in the Consolidated Revenue Funds. The total asset is 1,051,250. And the total of both the debit side, 1,051,250. The following additional information is also relevant. One, loan interest outstanding at the end of the year was 12.5 billion naira. So the loan interest outstanding will be treated as current liability. I want to know that the items in the additional information will be given a double entry treatment. That is, they will be given two treatment. If, you, if this loan interest outstanding should be recognized as a liability, then the interest also will be treated as an expenditure in the statement of financial performance. Then two, depreciation of tangible assets is charged as follows. Uh, at the following rates on cost. These are the depreciation charge for the year. The depreciation charge for the year will be treated as an expense in the statement of financial performance. Then two, the second entry, it will be added to the previous, the previous year depreciation in order to get the accumulated depreciation to date that will be treated, that will be deducted from the cost of the asset in the statement of financial position. You have since the question says at, uh, at the following rates on cost, that means the method of depreciation used is straight line method. On that straight line method, depreciation is calculated on cost. So, building is 5%. Cost of land is 250 billion. I want to know that land is not to be depreciated. Therefore, this cost of the land should be removed from the land and building in order to get the value of the building, which upon which depreciation will be charged. It's only the, the building that will be depreciated. Take note of that. Motor vehicles is 20%. You apply 20% on the cost of motor vehicles, depreciation on motor vehicles. Equipment and furniture is 15%. Apply 15% on the cost of equipment and furniture in the trial balance. Note three, a building costing 12.5 billion with accumulated depreciation of 5 billion was sold for 11.2 5 billion. This transaction has not been adjusted in the accounts. Now, there is a disposal of an asset. In line with the realization concept, profit will be recognized when an asset is sold. Uh, so, in this case, we are going to calculate the profits or losses from disposal. And the profits will be the difference between the carrying amount of the asset disposed and the sales proceeds. This is the proceeds from disposal. Then, to get the carrying amount, of the asset disposed, you have the cost of the asset less the accumulated depreciation of the asset disposed. 12.5 billion minus 5 billion. That would give us 7.5 billion. The 7.5 billion is the carrying amount of the asset disposed. Then you now compare it with the proceed. Since the proceed is greater than the carrying amount, that is to show that this asset has been disposed of at a profit. The profit from disposal of this asset should be treated as part of our revenue in the statement of financial performance. Note 4. Interest on receivables amounting to 10 billion. So I've told you everything, additional information, we are going to give them two treatments. 
interest on receivable, you are going to treat that as revenue. That is number one. Number two, interest on receivable, you are going to treat that as a current asset in the statement of financial position. So, interest receivable is an asset. Interest as is due to be received, but which have not actually been received for the period. So, it's just like receivable. So, you are going to treat it as an asset in the statement of financial position. I've told you it will be a revenue in the statement of financial performance. You are required to prepare one statement of financial performance of the state for the year ending December 31st, 2022. Two, statement of financial position as at December 31st, 2022. I, this question is obtained from ICAM May 2023, the public sector accounting and finance. Now, let's have the solution to the question. Solution. The name of the entity is Dovet State Government. Dovet State Government. You have statement of financial performance for the year ended December 31st, 2022. So, I will have Naira and M. Naira and M. Now you are to start with revenue. Revenue. Now let's go through the trial balance. What are the items of revenue we have here? So I told you these are assets. Depreciation will be charged against the assets. Motor vehicle is also an asset. Then we have federation accounts and location 287,500. Federation accounts. Our location we have federation accounts our location so that is the government revenue two eight seven five hundred back to the question you also have VAT allocation it is seven thousand five hundred. VAT, VAT allocation. VAT allocation. It is seven thousand five hundred. Then we have grants from federal government. Thirty three thousand seven fifty grants. From federal government of thirty three thousand seven fifty. Back to the question. We have internally generated funds ninety seven thousand five hundred. Internally. Generated funds, internally generated funds, ninety seven thousand five hundred. That is revenue. Then we have grant from donor agency, twenty five thousand naira. That is also revenue. Grant. From donor agency, twenty five thousand naira. So, as on the emoluments, that is expenditure. Maintenance of premises, that is an expenditure. Consolidated revenue funds charges, that is an expenditure. 
overhead expenses, that is an expenditure. Miscellaneous expenditure slash income. This is expenditure, while this is income. Miscellaneous income now, 61,250. Miscellaneous. Income sixty one thousand two fifty. Then we have loan interest, loan notes. That this is liability, current assets look liability. This is assets and liability respectively. Consolidated revenue funds, CRA. This is the consolidated revenue fund balance. Back to the additional information. One, loan interest outstanding at the end of the year was 12.5 million. That is not revenue. Note two is depreciation. It's not a revenue. Then, note three, a building costing 12.5 billion with accumulated depreciation of 5 billion was sold for 11.25 billion. Now, let's calculate profit Our loss from disposal of non current assets. We have the six proceeds. This proceeds, and that amounted to eleven million two fifty thousand. That is eleven point two five billion. That is sales proceeds. Therefore, sales proceeds will less the carrying amount. And I've told you that the carrying amount will be the cost. You know, the building costing 12.5 billion. The cost was 12.5 billion with accumulated depreciation of 5 billion. So 12.5 billion less depreciation will give you the carrying amount. So we less carrying amount. I want you to know that the current amount is, is called net book value. The current amount will be cost. The building costing 12.5 billion. 12.5 billion. Then accumulated depreciation. Depreciation of 5 billion from note 3. If you subtract accumulated depreciation of 5 billion, from the cost of 12.5 billion, then you'll be left with 7.5 billion. The proceed is greater than the current amount. So you have the profit from disposal or building. Profit is 0, 0.5. 5 from 12, we have 7, 7 from 10, 3 million, million 750,000, 3 billion 750,000. So profits from disposal of building. Now profit from disposal of building. Let's have that as working number one. This is working one. So we have that to be three seven five zero. Then back to the note. Note four. Interest on receivables amounted to ten billion. Interest. On receivable and that is amounted to 10 billion these are the items of revenue we have in the question let's sum up the revenue we have 287 500 plus 87 500 plus 33 750 plus 97 500 plus 25,000 
plus 61,250 plus 3,750 plus 10,000. Our revenue is total 606250. The total revenue, total revenue of 606250. After total revenue, you have expenditure. Expenditure. Now, back to the question. Land and building, that is an asset. Long-term investments is an asset. Equipment and furniture, that is an asset. Accumulated depreciation. This accumulated depreciation represents depreciation for the prior accounting period. It's not the depreciation that will be charged as an expense in the statement of profit or loss. Remember, an expense is you have a debit balance. It should be at the debit side of the trial balance. So this depreciation will be deducted from the cost of the asset. So where we get to statement of financial position. Motor vehicle is also an asset. Federation account has been considered as revenue. VAT allocation revenue. Grant from federal government revenue. Internally generated funds, that is revenue. Grant for do not agency, that is revenue. Then we have personnel and emoluments. That is expenditure. Personnel. Personnel. Emolument. Personnel emolument amounted to 125,000. Back to the question. Then, maintenance of premises. That is 5,000. Maintenance. Of premises. Of 5,000 Naira. Then we have consolidated revenue fund charges. 32,500. CRF charges. Consolidated revenue fund charges. Of thirty two thousand five hundred. Then we have overhead expenses twenty five thousand naira. Overheads, overhead expenses, overhead expenses twenty five thousand. Then we have miscellaneous expenditure. Thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Miscellaneous. Expenditure. Of uh, thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Loan notes is a liability. Current assets, stroke liability, these are assets and liability respectively. Consolidated revenue fund. That is the balance, the opening balance. The first note there, we have loan interest outstanding at the end of the year was 12.5 billion. That is the outstanding loan interest. Loan interest. The word outstanding there means it has not been paid. So that's to show that the same amount will be recognized as liability, 12.5 billion. Back to the question. Depreciation on tangible asset is charged at the following rates on cost. Building is 5%. Depreciation. Depreciation. We have building. Which is 5%. Remember, you have to calculate depreciation on cost. How much is the cost of building? You are given land and building cost 387,500. Land and building 387,500. Back to the note. You were told. Cost of land, 250 billion. Remember, land is not to be depreciated. So we are going to remove the 250 billion minus 
250,000, 250 billion. Then if you go to the note three, a building costing 12.5 billion with accumulated depreciation of 5 billion was sold for 11.25 billion. This transaction has not been adjusted in the accounts. The cost of the building disposed is 12.5 billion. Since there is a disposal of building, we are going to de-recognize de the part of the building disposed during the period. We are going to remove it from the building in order to let, uh, in order to know the amount that have not been disposed during the period. 12.5 billion was disposed minus 12,500. Now, 387,500, remember we are subtracting land because land is not to be depreciated because it does not have a predetermined useful life. 387,500 minus 250,000 minus 12,500. Then you are left with, you are left with, with 125,000. So you are left with 125,000. The whole of this gives you one to five thousand. Five percent of one to five thousand. So you you have six thousand two fifty. That is the depreciation to be charged on building. Back to the question, the note. Motor vehicles is twenty percent depreciation on on motor vehicles. Motor. Vehicles. Twenty percent. You calculate twenty percent of the cost of the motor vehicle. And how much is the cost of the motor vehicles? So we have motor vehicles cost one forty five thousand. So we have twenty percent of one forty five thousand. That gives us twenty nine thousand. Then we have equipment and furniture is 15%. Depreciation rate is 15% of cost. So equipment and furniture. You have 15% of cost. How much is the cost of equipment and furniture? So we have equipment and furniture, 67,500. 67,500. So we have 15% of 67,500. That gives us 10,125. Now, let's sum up all our expenditure. So, we have 1 to 5,000 plus 5,000, that is 130,000, plus 32,500, that is 162,500, plus 25,000, plus 37,500, plus 12,500, plus 6,250. Plus twenty nine thousand. Plus ten thousand one two five. That is total twenty two thousand eight seven five. Two eight two eight seven five. That is the total expenditure. Now, your total revenue. Is six zero six two fifty, which is greater than the expenditure. How much is the difference? Excess of revenue over expenditure. That is surplus. Three two three three seven five. Three two three three seven five. That is surplus. 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 The surplus is the excess of revenue over expenditure.
Then you have the opening balance in the consolidated revenue accounts, consolidated revenue fund, CRF, 81,250. So we have CRF brought forward, 81,250. If you now add it, there's 81,250. Then you have 404625. 404625. 404625. That is C R F carried forward. This is the solution to the statement of financial performance. Now, back to the second part of the question. You have to prepare the statement of financial position as of December 31st, 2022. The name of the entity is Dovet State Government. Government. We have statement of financial position as at December 31st Twenty twenty two. I told you that you start with assets, that our assets will be arranged in order of their liquidity, in order of their liquidity. Now, back to the trial balance. Do we have uh, the land and building? It's not current assets. It's less liquid. So since it is less liquid, we don't have cash. But we have current assets. I want to assume that the current asset comprises cash and others. Current assets, 38,750. Current, current assets. No, if you use other permanency, it's equally acceptable. 38,750. You use the order of their permanent. That is by starting with no current asset before you have your current asset. That is equally acceptable. Now, if you look at note four, you have interest on receivable amounted to 10 billion. Interest on receivables. Interest on receivables. That is 10 billion. 10 billion. Then you have long term investment, 187,500. That is not current asset. Long term investment. 187,000, 187,500. Then after that, you have land and building, equipment and furniture, as well as motor vehicles. Those ones are not current assets, property, plant and equipment. So now let's have schedule of property, plant and equipment. Schedule. Let me have working number two. The do of property, plant, and equipment. You can equally call it movement in property, plant, and equipment. One, two, three, four. The first class you have is land and building. Land 
and building. Then we equally have equipment and furniture. Equipment and furniture. Then you have motor vehicles. Motor vehicles. Now let's have total. A multi million naira. You start with the opening balance. Balance brought forward. Land and building, 387,500. 387,500. If you like, you can separate land from building, but I'm putting the two together. Then we have equipment and furniture, 67,500. 67,500. Then you have motor vehicles, 145,000. Motor vehicles, 145,000. And how much is the total? So 387, 500 plus 67, 500 plus 145,000. And that is totaled 600,000. Then we have disposal. Disposal. Since this is at cost, then the disposal too will equally be reported at cost. A building costing 12.5 billion. The cost of the asset disposed is 12.5 billion. Building 12,500. Disposal. You subtract that. In total, you equally subtract that. There is no addition. By addition, we mean the one acquired during the period. Now, how much will be the, cl the cost of the asset at the end of the period? So we have for land and building, 387, 500. Less disposal, 12,500. You have 375,000. That is the balance as at December 31st, at the end of the period. That is the cost. 67,500, 145,000, then 600,000. Less 12,500 minus 12,500. So you have 587,500. Then the next section of the PP schedule will be depreciation. Depreciation, you start with the opening balance, balance brought forward in respect of depreciation. And how much is that? So we have accumulated depreciation, land and building. 40,000. Motor vehicles, 30,000. Land and building, 40,000. Motor vehicles, 30,000. Then we equally have for equipment and furniture, 21,250. 21,250. Now let's sum it up. 40 plus 30, that is 70. Plus 21.25, that is. 91,250. Then you now have depreciation charge for the year. Charge for the year. That is the amount charged as an expense. You go back to the statement of financial performance. Depreciation charge as an expense in respect of building. We have 6,250. 6,250. That is for building. Then for motor vehicles, we have 29,000 from our statement of financial performance. Motor vehicles, 29,000. Then equipment and furniture, we have 10,125. 10,125. Then let's sum up that 6,250. 
plus 29,000 plus 10,125. Our depreciation is total 45,000. Then the next session is disposal. How much is the depreciation attributable to the asset disposed? Now, back to the note. You were told that a building costing 12.5 billion with accumulated depreciation of 5 billion was sold. The depreciation of attributable to the building disposed, the accumulated depreciation is 5 billion. So you have 5 billion. You subtract that. 5 billion. So, this will be 41,250 December balance as at the end of the period. December 31st. Let me have this one to be B, while this is A. Then to get the carrying amount, carrying amount. I've told you that the carrying amount is, all, is, is also called neighbor value, which is A minus B. The cost, less accumulated depreciation. Cost, the cost of the asset is 375000 Minus accumulated depreciation of 41,250. So we have 333,333,750. For equipment and furniture, you have addition of these two is 59,000. 59,000 subtracted from the cost of 67,500. 67,500. Minus uh, 59,000. So we have 8,000, 8,500 as the carrying amount. Then addition of these two, 21,250 plus 10,125. Then that is total 31,375. You it from the cost of 145,000. We have the current amount of 113,625. For the total column, 91,250 plus 45,375 minus 5,000. We have 131,625. If you subtract it from 587500, 587500, so you have the carry amount to be 455875. 455875. 875. This amount, now let's report it. We have property, plant, and equipment. That is working two or note two for fifty five thousand eight seven five. After property, plant, and equipment, let's go through the note. Note three you were told that a building costing 12.5 billion with accumulated depreciation of 5 billion was sold for 11.25 billion. This is the proceeds from the disposal, which is cash. This transaction has not been adjusted in the accounts. That means this cash has not equally been adjusted in the accounts. So we are going to report that as an asset. Cash, that is the proceeds from disposal. Let me put cash. Proceeds from disposal of building. And that's amounted to. 11,250 from note 3. Now, after this, let's sum up all the assets. We have 11,250 plus 
38,750 plus 10,000 plus 187,500 plus uh, 455,875. So our assets is totaled 703. Three seven five. So that is total assets. The next section is liabilities and uh, equity. Equity and liabilities. Equity and liabilities. So you start with the liabilities. Now current liabilities. And that amounted to back to the question. You have current assets look liabilities. So this is current assets. Why this is current liability? Thirty six thousand two fifty. Thirty six thousand two fifty. Now let's go through the question. Remember liability we have a credit balance. So I'm checking those items. I have the credit balance. Then we have loan notes, which is not current liability, and that amounted to two fifty thousand loan notes of two fifty thousand. Two fifty thousand loan notes two fifty thousand. So then we have loan interest outstanding at the end of the year. Well, Five billion. Let me deal with that before I consider the loan notes because your loan interest, outstanding loan interest, is a current liability. So, outstanding, outstanding, outstanding loan interest from note one 4.5 billion. Then back to the notes, note two is depreciation. Note 3 is disposal. Note 4 is interest on receivables, which have been recognized as an asset. Then I can include the loan. Loan notes, which is current, non current liabilities. And that amounted to 250000 So now, let's sum up all the liabilities 36,250 plus 12,500 plus 250,000. So our liability is totaled to 98,750. That is total, total liabilities. After total liabilities, we have the net assets, net assets or equity. Net assets or equity. So the only net asset we have is CRF form, which is 404625, consolidated revenue funds. I think the last figure in our statement of financial performance, the last figure from statement of financial performance, 404625, that is the last figure there. So if you now add it now, so plus four zero four six two five. So we have seven zero three three seven five. That is the total equity and liabilities. The total equity and liabilities of seven zero three three seven five agree with the total assets. This marks the end of the solution to the question. Please drop the love emoji, share the video with others, and like it as well. Thanks for watching this account.